headline reads, six consoles that nearly didn't get made. Hold up. Yes, nearly didn't get made. Nate Dog hold it down. So um, he held it down. So yeah, we're gonna get into this. You know, I thought this would be pretty cool, you know, because some of our favorite consoles and some iconic consoles nearly never came out. So let's go ahead and get into it, starting with number six, the original Xbox. The Xbox had a secret name while it was in development hell called the Coffin Box, rightfully so, because most employees within Microsoft who were working on the project deemed it a failure right from the get-go and feared losing their jobs over it. What the hell? The main issue was the production of the units since Microsoft had to make each of them in-house. Not only that, another hurdle was procuring a CPU to power the system. Although Microsoft tasked AMD with developing one, the company decided to opt out last minute for a CPU made by Intel. Even though AMD helped with, the mo with most of the development excuse me, for the prototype hardware, Microsoft even had trouble finding the right controller and ended up settling for a clunky, confusing mess. Yes, man, um, you know, I'm going to read some of this stuff. I'm not going to read all of it. But um, yeah, man, the original Xbox, it was rough. You know, uh, it was terrible and it was garbage. And it's always been garbage. So, and we also talking about, you know, around 2001, 2002, you know, early 2000s. So, when this came out, the PlayStation 1 was already out. Nintendo I already had the Super Nintendo and all these other consoles out. Sega already had a couple consoles out. Atari he already was out. A lot of these things, you know, were already out prior to this Xbox coming out. So, now, what you got to understand is, is that, um, you know, it's like, Yo, they all want this. Like I was telling y'all, they came in last when making consoles because they was the last ones to make consoles, and you know, it it wasn't necessarily their their wheelhouse per se. So let's uh go ahead and get to number five, Nintendo's Famicom. Nintendo was a toy company when it first started and produced handful of cards during its initial years. That star made them highly doubt the process of creating and launching their own home entertainment system. Since the creation of the Famicom wasn't taken very seriously. The system saw, yeah, the system barely saw, excuse me, any active development and the project definitely sold some internal discord within the company. Even after its launch, the Famicom barely had any games to its name before Hudson Soft started developing titles for the console. This was a huge shift in pace for Nintendo and came to later define the company as a whole. And we know this to be true because now when you hear Nintendo, you think of Mario, Luigi, Link, you know, the Legend of Zelda, you know, you think of these types of titles and you think video games now, not necessarily toys or cards or stuff like that. And if you don't know what the Famicom looked like, here it is right here, you know, uh, you know, family computer. Wow. You know, the uh, Super Nintendo, all these different things right here. So, you know, these companies, you know, they, you know, when they started off, it wasn't like they just started off and they hit the ball out the park. No, it was, you know, it was some steps, you know, they had to take steps and, you know, through trial and error, you know, they got it right. So let's go ahead and go to number four. Number four was the Nintendo Wii. The Wii U, prior to its launch, saw a lot of controversy. And internal execs at Nintendo were pretty divided when it came to greenlighting the project due to the fact that they had little faith in its success and the addition of a screen. Not only that, the company's stock also took a major dip after the console was announced. The production costs far outweighed the benefits, yet Nintendo execs still went for and powered through the losses since they knew they had a good lineup of games planned for the system. So yes, I know a lot of y'all like what the hell yeah the nintendo we had to you know it was it caught some hell too now the nintendo we i've played the nintendo we the nintendo we was actually a cool console man it was actually pretty cool when you look back at it in hindsight but you know hindsight is 2020 you know 2020 hindsight whatever however that saying is i personally don't like looking backwards i like moving forwards but when it comes to the nintendo we the Wii U, uh, the, 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 hell, yeah, the Wii U and the Nintendo Wii as a whole, like that console, that run of, uh, for Nintendo is something I have to look back on and be like, no, nah, they actually had a sleeper with that one because it was actually a pretty cool console. It was pretty good. You know, I played it a few times and I, and I enjoyed myself. You know, I enjoyed myself playing it, you know, so you know, it was cool, but, you know, you know, it was rocky. You know, some people didn't believe in it, but it was what it was. Number three, Sega Dreamcast. Despite losing a lot of money trying to promote and sell the Genesis, the execs at Sega were still hoping to recover from that blow by launching a console that would shake up the video game market. Not only did Sega scoff at EA's growing popularity and essentially shunned its lineup of games, but it even blew its budget on an advertising campaign that barely brought any traction. Its previous release, the Sega Saturn, 
failed majorly since it barely had any games and most of them were a clunky visual mess. Unfortunately, before its launch, the Dreamcast was fairly internally contested and the company was unsure of the hardware's capabilities. Inevitably, after the launch, Sega quit manufacturing hardware entirely. What the hell? Yeah, it was, it was all bad. Yeah, after that, it was over. Number two, the Nintendo Switch. As a lot of us are sitting here like, I find this hard to believe. Well, after the critical failure of the Wii U, Nintendo took a big risk with this next big console release. The higher-ups in the company were already wary of producing a system that, most, that mostly focused on single-player games, but came to an agreement when they coined a unique way to use the controllers of the console. Nintendo needs to capitalize on its initial success with the Wii, and the Switch was a risky investment, though would re investment it thought would be worth it. But yeah, you know, so overall, in the end, it was worth it for the Nintendo Switch. And personally, I think Nintendo is going to be fine in the mobile game market, especially the mobile game device market, because they've had success with the Game Boy, with the, with the Game Boy Run. So Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy ESP, Game Boy Micro, Nintendo DS, uh, DS Lite, DS whatever, you know, like there they should be fine. But. You know, when you're talking about a, 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 a major competitor, you know, it's a, it's a lot more risk into it and it's a lot more on the line. So I can understand how it might have been some shakiness with the Nintendo Switch. And last but not least, one of the greatest consoles of all time, the PlayStation 2. Although considered to be one of the highest selling consoles of all time upon launch, the PS2 barely had enough units or decent games to ship out. Not only that, before launch, it faced some significant legal and technical hurdles. For example, the emotion engine Sony developed with Toshiba faced scrutiny over its production because it apparently infringed on a patent held by the University of Wisconsin. What the hell? Touch feedback development company Immersion also took a swing at Sony for using its vibration technology to power the DualShock controllers it so proudly boasted about and eventually won the case. It also didn't help the console was in an absolute pain to develop games for. It had 10 different processors and the kits provided to game developers included stacks of hand hard to read, excuse me, manuals that barely made the process any easier. Most of the code they'd have to write would have to be flawless since only the main CPU had a debugger they could, they could use. For the rest, they had to develop without spotting any bugs. So, um, yeah, you know, it had some issues with the PS2 as well, but ultimately, you know, it would bounce back and be one of the greatest consoles we ever had. So, as you all know, and as we can see, you know, it's, um, you know, we almost didn't get these consoles, man. You know, we almost didn't get them. And it's like, yo, glad we got them. You know what I'm saying? But we all, we almost didn't get them.